Justin Jericho. What's up, buddy? Thank you for uh, agreeing to uh, let us talk to you today about your career, your work with Pink. I mean, for people who don't know, Justin Jericho, you have been Pink's sideman, the most recognized guitarist with her and her music for almost 20 years. Yeah. Uh, you also concurrently will work on the voice and be the guitar player. But I think the, the thing to me that, that is, you know, super impressive about what it is that you do is, is I think shown most through the work that you've done with Pink, because first of all, as an artist, she's incredible in that she's had, as you know, just a tremendous amount of just hit after hit after hit decade after decade after decade and to be at sort of just the top of your game for that long i mean she's had hits clear back to when i was in high school yeah me too (laughs) (laughs) and 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 so you know you have the task of not only learning you know obviously the catalog before you were involved Mm -hmm. but also interpreting the sessions and and how the record sounded when you know we're listening to it on the radio or on our cd players if it's back then yeah, or yeah. mp3s or whatever it is and then translating it to a high energy performance that's in an arena right and i think that you're sort of in a unique position where you know some of the songs that you know pink has performed you you on some of these sessions especially on the new stuff you yep. you are on some of the songs yep yep and not only are you the session guitar player on some of these, but then you're also having to like figure out, okay, how are we going to translate this? So I'm really interested today on sort of how you interpret the original sessions and kind of translate them to the live performance and maybe how you adapt them mm-hmm. or change them based on sort of the energy or the the feel that 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 Pink wants to have for the arena tours. I, I want to hear kind of just, let's get into it. Let's, yeah. let's hear what some of this stuff sounds sure. like. I want to start with Who Knew. Okay. And uh, that was early 2000s, 2005, 2006, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was right. That was the record. On, that was I'm Not Dead. That was right um, right when I joined. Okay. So she was. She just finished promo with that record, and that's when I came in. Got it. Right before the tour. So then this is a great one to start with. So first of all, there's, there's a couple of different sort of sections of this, like what sort of gear wise kind of what's your approach on, on how to create kind of the guitar part on this? What's, what do you, what do you do? So, well, initially, cause you could tell like on the record, um, I'm not sure who played it, but, um, it, it's, it's obviously a single coil, like yeah. a strat, you know, uh, it sounds like a strat to me. Yeah. Um, so I try that and, you know, like I love strats, don't get me wrong, but sometimes like, uh, like it's great in the verse. It sounds great because it's like a clean stratty thing. Yep. But then it gets to the chorus and it's, you know, more of a big, you know, yep. y- you know, rock and roll thing. Right. Yep. And so, um, and you know, I mainly, you know, I'm a Les Paul guy. Yep. Right. So, and this is the Les Paul you've used with pink. <laughs> this for is the, the last 20 years. This is the one. Yeah. So, I mean, so I just try to get like a clean sound and, and again, like with, with this song in particular too, like I kind of have to be careful with, even with my clean sound, it's like, it's pretty, it still breaks up a little bit. Oh, okay. So like my thing, my approach with this one is like, I have to be real gentle with right. my right hand, right? So you get to clean up with the dynamics. Yeah. And then as far as like pedals or amps for this, what are you typically using? So for this one, um, no pedals, actually. No pedals. Well, ex- actually, yeah, no pedals. No pedals. Believe it or not. So. Okay. And I've got my my switcher, right? My the Ampeat switcher. So I. Sw- and this is the same rack you would use on this the. This is it. This yeah. is what I use for pink and the voice. Okay. Um, and so I've got the switcher over here, and then I've got the Friedman the BE one hundred, yep. and my my that's my original Shiva that I had for the past twenty years as okay. well. And are these both uh, EL thirty four or is uh the yes okay. EL thirty four okay yeah yeah cool um but yeah so this one. I'm basically the the verses are the Friedman clean, yep, nothing, and then the choruses are the Shiva dirty, and then any delays, reverbs, no, no, no just just dry, <laughs> just, just dry. dry. All right. <laughs>
after this. That's pretty much the whole song. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um, so my job is not that hard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's mostly the, just really fun. <laughs> the, the tones are, are, I mean, it's still incredible. I mean, it's, as you said, it's pretty pared down, but when you go to that, that, you know, kind of the, the dirtier rhythm guitar, it sounds absolutely incredible. The Shiva yeah. is a perfect fit for that. I mean, yeah. and I think in a lot of ways, again, I don't know that the audience member is hearing like this huge differential in the sound of the record versus the live performance. I mean, certainly it brings the energy and, yeah. you know, reverb and all that stuff, you know, sometimes even, even well, if it is there, it doesn't always translate. Yeah. Like in the stadium, there's lots of reverb. Yep. So sometimes like, I mean, I, I use reverbs and stuff for a lot of stuff. Um, actually that, that's like my favorite thing to say when I'm in the studio, cause we always track, um, a lot of stuff like dry. Cause when, you know, if they want to edit or fix anything, yep. so I always have them put a plug in on. So like my, the first thing I would say, Hey, can I, can I get some re reverb, please, please, <laughs> <laughs> or some delays, please. You know? Yeah. But but, you know, um, for this song, I mean, I've always done it that way and, and, and it's just always worked. And, and, and the other thing too, it's like live, I, you know, things are a little bit more forgiving live, yeah. I think, you yeah. know, and, and when everybody's there and the minute she starts singing, it sounds like the record, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that sounded like the record to me. So, uh, I think it's a, it's a win all around. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forwarding with the chronology, we're moving on a couple of years, 2008, you're already, you know, the, the in the band at that point mm -hmm. it wasn't like you're coming in and and doing the song so what that's again another huge Anthem. hit yeah, yeah i mean you know you got you got to play that song every, yeah. every gig I oh would yeah imagine. yeah um and so tell us about that song you know the adaptation from studio to stage you know what you're what you're doing with it the gear sure yeah um so that song when i first heard it i was like I was like, oh, this is awesome. But then when I first heard it, I was like, oh, how am I gonna how am I gonna play this? Because it's it's obvious like there's a guitar down there and there's a guitar. They're octaves apart. Yep. You know, that's that's what gives it that big that yeah, big yeah. thing. And um, you know, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll get an octave thing. But th there's like, you know, there's an, there's the middle, there's an octave below, and there's an octave on top. So it's yeah. like, so I was like, man, what am I gonna do? And then um Luckily for me, <laughs> maybe I'm the luckiest guy in the world, right? Luckily for me, um, uh, Electro Harmonics came out with the Pog around right. that time. And, uh, maybe, and you had the big one at first? I had the big one at first. Yeah, I think, yeah, actually, with, I, think with, I see with, it over, over there. With you all the, the dials, yeah, you yeah. know, which is amazing. John, John Frusciante, I think, you know, is a big user at maybe still, hopefully. Fingers yeah. crossed. He's, he's still going old school analog. Oh, dude, it's the best. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's uh, like one of the coolest pedals because the coolest thing about that pedal was... You know, you have other octave pedals and multi effects and things like that. But the thing that was so cool about this one is is that it it tracks so well. Yep. And it's also polyphonic. Yep. So not that I'm playing chords on this particular song, but there are times where you know you you know can dial it back a little bit and yep. dial up the octave up and yep. get sort of a twelve stringy effect. Yeah. But a, a cool cool yeah. harmonic or uh, sonic thing. Yeah. Um. So that was the thing for that, right? Um. So basically for this. For this song, it's just the Pog and the Shiva. Fun part about playing that song is is, I mean, there's a lot. The, the whole thing's cool. And I love the sounds. Yeah, and the gro and the groove is great on that on the chorus. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just a sh shuffle, right? So I've got this like. You know, it looks cool, right? But I've got this like circular motion. But it for me, it just sort of helps. The yeah. groove, you know, the, the, you know. The, the pride and joy circular it's cool, motion. You know. <laughs> 
I mean, that's what it is. And that's yeah. like, that's how I interpreted yeah. that, you know, as I love Stevie. I think the coolest thing too, just, I mean, even just in the two songs we covered so far, it's like, you think that there's all this production, but really it's like loud, like just organic sounding amplifiers. We were talking about the clean tone yeah. of the Freedman, and we're talking about the gain tone of the Shiva. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely killer. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Moving on sequentially to the next song, also from Funhouse, is mm-hmm. is Sober. Yep. And Sober is a really cool one. I, I, I We were talking before we started filming that it, it's like a really nice strat tone. Sounds like it's kind of martially, mm-hmm. potentially. It kind of has like a Hendrixy kind of a lot of double stops. Live, you said you're doing it with the Les Paul and kind mm-hmm. of just trying to get maybe more single coil vibe out of that. Can you tell the people about your sort of trick uh, and to, to kind of the, what we were home the Bukovac trick to yeah. kind of get that single coil sound out of a Les Paul. If you kind of can't facilitate a guitar change, or there's these really quick changeovers between songs and transitions. Yeah. So sober, I've got um, the the Bukovac. Yeah. So for those of the, those of the people who are watching who have never heard of the Bukovac trick, uh-huh. what is the Bukovac? You're trick? basically just dialing. I've got the the bossy Q pedal, and you're just you're dialing some frequencies out um, and in and, and lowering the level a, a little bit to, cause like these have more output than, than strats, right? Yep. So you want to lower that a little bit and, and, um, and, and, you know, it, it, to try to get more of a single coil yep. sound. It's not, it, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's a, really, it's a good, it's a great hack. So on, so on this, you're using the EQ to kind of get more of a single coily sound in terms of, uh, Pedals or effects, amps, what are you using typically for this? So for this one, I'm using, again, the clean on the Friedman. Uh, and I got a little bit of verb. Okay. And then I've got the CE2. Okay, so a little chorus from the CE2. And then I'm just going neck pickup on the... Uh, on this, oh, and, okay. and, I've got the, and I've got the EQ pedal in as well. That song is so much fun to play. Like it's a it, great guitar part. It's a great guitar part. I mean, the the Hendrixy kind of element yeah. of it is so cool. And I mean, that's the, what I feel like. If I if I had played that, that's I maybe I wouldn't have thought of that. Who knows? But I mean, that's something I would gravitate towards playing. Yeah, you know. No, it's it's <clears throat> a fantastic part. It sounds great. Suits the song well. And you know, I I mean, I clearly think that when it goes to like the chorus, the the higher gain in, in humbucker pickups is an absolute must. Yeah. I mean, it sounds heavenly here with, and that's the Shiva for the the yeah, that's the Shiva. And I mean, it's yeah, it's incredible how good that sounds. Yes, for it's, that, it's it's really really impressive. Thanks, man. And and um, you know, yeah, I mean, just like the feel, the groove of it. I mean, obviously, you, you make it feel amazing and that's part of what just gets people when they're seeing it live <laughs> thanks man so next song i want to talk to you about also from funhouse mm-hmm. 2008 ish or so yes 2008 yeah. is please don't leave me right. now uh, this one is one of my favorite pink songs i actually heard you do a really cool rendition of it uh-huh. live with kelly clarkson yeah. in pink where it was just like the three of you and I remember that Pink had said that you were one of the top three guitar players <laughs> of all time. Because she's too nice. I think Justin is top three living guitarists in the world. Aww. She uh, she threw down the gauntlet, and <laughs> and you know I I have to agree, man. Oh, Just an well, amazing guitar that, player, and in in so versatile. And I not only want to hear if you'll if you'll entertain this, I want to hear how you're doing it on the electric guitar. Okay. But I'm also curious if you'll show us how you did the acoustic arrangement. Sure. Because I guess depending on the set, it could be an electric version or it could be an acoustic yeah, version. Yeah, I mean, this last uh, summer we did a bunch of like festival stuff. Um, 
And so she likes to change up things. And, you know, like we did Who Knew acoustically as yeah. well. And we like that was a huge departure for from what the actual part was and stuff. But please don't leave me. I was like, I was like trying to figure out, man, how do I make this, um, you know, bigger, you know, because yes. it's just me and her. And yeah. like, how do I like, you know, make it like bigger and maybe in, in prettier, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I messed around for a little while, you know, on, on the acoustic and, and, uh, you know, I, and I couldn't really, I tried capoing it and I, you know, I was trying all sorts of things and I was like, man, it just doesn't, doesn't, it's not there yet, you know? And then I said, screw it. And I'll, I'll just throw it in a, a alternate tuning, which I, I don't do a whole lot of. So I tuned it down and as soon as you hit the friggin' strings wide open, it's just instantly yeah. amazing yeah. and beautiful. I you mean, know? more open strings when you're doing sort of like solo acoustic. acoustic or, stuff. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, yeah. You yeah. have to, yeah. right? It's a must. So it, it, it just, and it just worked out to be really cool. And she really liked it when I played it for her. And, and so that's, that's, we did it like that. And then, so when we did the Kelly thing, that was one of the songs that came up and it was, um, you know, it was just really cool. So uh, for electric, let's start there. Okay. What's the typical setup that you'll use to, to, to perform this? You'll have Les Paul, of course. Uh -huh. And uh, in terms of effects, amplifiers, what do you, what are you typically using? So for this again, man, back to the nuts and bolts of it all. I'm, I've got the only thing I've got. Actually, no, I've got two things on. I've got the clean sound. Uh, on this, on the uh, so I've got I've got the Friedman and I'm clean. Yep. And I've got uh, the Flint reverb. Yep. Um, Are you doing the Bukovac trick on this one? Doing for, the Bukovac on okay, this one. Okay. Okay. Get more of the single coil thing. Exactly. Yeah. Version. Would uh -huh. you be willing to kind of show us how that yeah. translates differently? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. That's such a beautiful arrangement, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it's such that. A beautiful arrangement. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I, I'm, when I heard it, uh, you know, kind of like the highlight reel of uh -huh. stuff you did there, I was like, man, that's a really cool sound. I remember immediately texting you, what what tuning was that? <laughs> yeah, um, I remember that because I was like, man, that sounded so good. Um, it's the power of dad gad. Yeah, yeah. The fat, the fat, the fat, the fat gad. Yeah. <laughs> D flat gad. Yeah. It's it's it sounds incredible and, and I think it just it, you know adds like another dimension to well, that song, already a great song, and gives you another way to you know, reach people with it. Yeah, I mean with her too, like she's such a great singer. It's like Absolutely. the minute it's like it's one thing when I'm playing the stuff and then when she starts singing, there's just some really awesome thing that happens and it's just like it's just really powerful. Yeah. You know. No doubt. No doubt. Um I want to move on to the next, uh, the next phase. song. Yeah, 2012, early early 2010s, uh, and uh, the song "Try." I don't, what's what's the record that, that one's on? Oh, uh, "Truth About Love." Truth About Love. Yeah, but but for this one, we'll have to transition. I presume back to the the trusty Les yeah. Paul. All right. Yeah. All right. So guitar change. Uh huh. On this song, you use a different guitar than old reliable. Yes. Behind us. What's this guitar? This is a um, Ronnie Montrose, um, you know, custom shop fifty eight uh, R eight, mm -hmm. basically. Um, you know, looks gorgeous. It's, it's relict. 
Um, I didn't do the relicking. But so not non natty relicking, but still very tastefully done. Very tastefully done. And so you find that this works particularly well for try. This is kind of yeah. why this guitar comes out. Uh, as far as other gear to get the sound, mm -hmm. what are you using for try? So this one's pretty cool. Like I got a few things uh, going on. So like, um, for the verse, and I've kind of beefed it up. Like the original is more, you know, more of the. It's more of a. It's it's more of a cleaner sound. Yep. Um, and so but as we talked about translating it live, sometimes requires exactly a more so muscle. I give it. I, I I got a little reverb on here, and I got the OD three, the um, Boss OD three. So just like a pretty simple, not not the sexy like choice that yeah. you know of overdrive that people might say oh it needs to be the boutique thing that pedal is like one of the greatest pedals i own yeah like it, it's it's uh like especially on the voice man i use that thing yeah all the time yeah i mean it's, it's a great just pedal. you know for that like kind of light crunch yeah yeah it's amazing yeah so for You know, that's that's basically my, my verse thing. And then the chorus, I've got going to the Shiva. Nothing special. So that first part was Friedman with the OD3. Friedman with okay, the OD3 okay. and the Flint. Okay, and the Flint reverb. Um, and, and is that set to like a spring, a plate, the hall? Is it 60s? Uh, it's a, the, the 60s um, spring. Okay. Do we uh, want to give it a try in, in the context of the track? Hear what, you're, what it exactly sounds like with all those yeah. changes? That's cool, right? It's uh, sound incredible. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's super incredibly simple, but it's just it's really, really cool. There's a lot of other guitar parts on that that track that are really, really kind of that I don't do. Like it, that stuff, we it's kind of in the box, you know. Um, I I don't even really know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like that that kind of, and there, yeah. I think that in the chorus, there's also this. Something, something like that, but it's yeah. probably it's probably two different parts. It's probably and then the other part would be something like that. And it's way more verbed out than that. Yeah, it's beautiful though. Yeah, but there's like that, and there's another part. I feel like it's funny because I don't know how it kind of came up, but it was like, um. Like it's it's it, I could hear it on on the tail end of the record. If you really listen, there's like this little kind of like you know, like that's going. But live, I ended up putting it in the box because um, it's not really throughout, or if it is throughout the song. But for whatever reason, she loves that part because it like it helps her. Because this is kind of low and woofy, you know. And it is on the record too. I mean, it's yeah. you know, yep. Uh, but like uh, that other part helps her get her pitch. Yep. And so I put it in it. It's something. It's something like I think it's. Which is such a sweet part, man. Yeah, yeah. It's such a cool. I I love it. So. And is that pretty buried in the mix or is it? It's Yeah, it's buried. And it's also like, it's one of those things like I kind of heard it and then it became like a thing because. Does she have it raised in her in ears? She so, does. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah big time. And in, in the live version, if you check it out, you'll hear that part. Yeah. It stands out a little bit more. Okay. It's a cool part. But there's a lot. And there's like also other, like during the verses, there's like other stuff that's like. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's little accents and yeah. stuff. Um, 
And it's funny, like, if, like, some things happen with the box sometimes, like, we'll be playing, and it's like, hey, where's that part? I'm missing yeah, yeah. that part, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Come to depend on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, these have all been sort of, like, the pink classics, mm-hmm. you know, that we've gone through. But I want to complete today with one of the newer songs, which you also played on, you're credited uh-huh. on for yep. the session, which is the duet that Pink and Chris Stapleton did. Yeah. And what's the title of that? The song is... Uh, 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 just Say I'm Sorry. Just Say I'm Sorry. And it's got like a combination of like tremolo mm-hmm. and kind of like cool double stops. Mm-hmm. You have like a double stop kind of rhythm solo. Solo, yeah. yeah. Um, tell us about the, the session... The gear, sure. were they there with you? Did you yeah. do it on your own? Okay. Should I, can I use my telly? Should I grab my telly? Yeah, yeah, let's grab it. So we got the telly, the yep. Ash telly. Yep. So given that you were on the session and also are going to be performing this song live here, I yep. presume, on this on this tour, tell us first about gear for the session. So this, it was funny because I was like, I wasn't sure you know, really what to bring. And so uh, I ended up just bringing, they said that they would have a, a deluxe reverb, Okay. you know, um, up there for me. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll just bring, I brought a Les Paul, I brought my Tally and I brought my Strat. Okay. And then I brought this tiny little pedal board, mm-hmm. the little nano thing with like, uh, I think I had a, a RC boost mm-hmm. and, um, and a, uh, a Flint. And I think I might have had a uh, the the El Capis, El Capistan. Uh, yeah, yeah, the delay. Okay, the delay. And then that was about it. That was it. Um, um, and then we got there, and I plugged into the deluxe, and it was it sounded awesome. Right. It just sounded great. And then this is the telly that was used. This is the telly that was used. Oh, okay. oh sorry. And then it- <laughs> okay. yeah. this is the the Nash telly that was used, and there was also like I did some slide. There's real far in the back. Um, I did some slide stuff where I just cranked the mix on the reverb uh, all the way up, right? And I just played like, just like you know, you know, just like yeah. I don't even remember what the hell I played, but just kind of out following the chords. Got it, right? Just like sort of notes on the chords. And and, and Pink and Chris were there. Chris was not okay. So it was me, uh, Pink, and uh, uh, um, a friend of ours, John. He was playing upright bass. Okay, and um. And so we, um, and Greg Kirsten was there. He's, you know, producer okay. um, and an engineer. And that was it. And we just did, I don't know, three or four takes. We played it for a few minutes until we felt like we had a kind of a plan. Yeah. And then, you know, we did several takes and that's what you hear. It's the whole pass down. I don't even know if we did it to a click. I can't, because because she counts us in. Okay. Um. And so it was all kind of, I think it was just all wild. It's just kind of off the floor. Yeah. And, and, uh, as far as the, you know, how much of it was like orchestrated was like, we used to have a chord outline or what did you have? As well, far- yeah. Like, so her and Chris wrote the song. Okay. And I, they, to, they played me, uh, like when I got there, they played me the, um, the the voice memo it was like a voice memo on the phone. Okay, it's so not and, even so. So it's like kind of below a scratch vocal or something like. Yeah, this. and you could barely hear Chris's guitar, and yeah. he's just. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, and like, and it's just like an acoustic guitar, and you could sort of hear the chords, you yeah. know. And so, um, so then I I just kind of listened to it, and I made like a little scratch, you know, chart, yep. just to just to have the form, yeah. Um, and that was it. All right. And so then I just started um, kind of messing with the, you know, the chords, you know, you know, you know, that kind of a thing. And I had the, you know, I think I'm, I don't know if I had the tremolo on or not, but. It was the tremolo on the flint or the amp? It's on the flint. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, yeah. And then I just started playing. I did the, like the intro thing. I played this like. Something like that, right? I mean, I think it's 
pretty much exactly that. But but I I, I played that and uh, or I played this. And Greg was like, yes, what is that? I love what you just did. Play that, you know, and we did a couple uh, passes before I kind of, you know, sort of reeled it in yeah. to what it what it ended up, yeah. ended up being because I played some different shit. Um, it wasn't like a gospel quality. Totally. To, to, it was totally to, like, you know, I was thinking kind of like Hendrixy, but, you know, like more of the new, new R&B sort of yeah. double stoppy things that, that people are doing. And, and so, um, you know, just trying to get a vibe. And, and yeah, I think I did several different takes and that, that was the one that we took. Right. Yeah. And, um, and then like later on in the song, there's like, a, uh, they were like, all right, we'll do a solo, but it was just like kind of me, like and me and John, but I couldn't really drop out because I'm, a, I'm the only person, that was the only thing dictating the harmony. Right, right. Yeah, so, so you, you kind of had to do like what, you know, a lot of like, you know, you hear like on the stack stuff, like Steve Cropper, where he kind of does like double stop solo y stuff. Yeah. You know, you know whatever. Yeah. I don't know what I played, but it was just yeah. kind of. Uh, you're, I have to, you're mixing I, like the rhythm guitar with the, with the lead stuff. Yeah, it's great. That was it. That yeah. was the whole vibe. And then, then there was like another section. Something something like that. But that and that was kind of the the nuts and bolts of the song. And then the the only other thing I did I did put acoustic on it, but I don't I think. I think it got next. Like, uh, it, it, it just didn't need it. Yeah, because the song is like very sparse. So it's nice to have kind of that space and just have the guitar doing its thing. It was, yeah, it's, it sounds absolutely, absolutely amazing. It's a great guitar part. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, it's, it was, I was really proud of it. And it was, it's one of my, it's actually one of, definitely one of my favorite songs, but not, not just because I played on it, but just, it's just a really good song. I actually didn't know it was you until we were talking and you had said that it, I always presumed like, oh, they probably hired like some Nashville guy. Cause sure. it's Chris. <laughs> yeah, right. Cause it kind of had that, you know, more of that sound, like the deluxe. I mean, I didn't know it was a deluxe, but I figured it was like a Fender mm -hmm. and you know, that they'd probably use the tremolo and the yeah. and the reverb off the amp you know, yeah something like that and you know had i done that it probably would have been a similar thing anyway but like and then chris he actually played the he played a solo over the solo that i did so uh, but the, he's so musical and he's so freaking awesome like as a musician you know let alone the amazing talent of a singer that he is but like you know, he played this just really chill, awesome solo, and 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 there's like a little conversation happening between the two guitars. Yeah, like I would have never played what he played. Yeah, you know, like in in like, and it was really cool how the, the they're bouncing off. Like I do a lick, and then he does like something, and and it was just kind of like just really cool how he played it because I yeah. Chris did it later. Yeah, and and that kind of like how he played off of what I did was I thought was was brilliant. Nice. Know? Yeah. I mean, he's you know. Certainly, uh, an incredible musician. I mean, if, if if you weren't aware of Chris Stapleton, hopefully by this this last Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah, you had your mind blown exactly by, by yeah. that performance. But uh, yeah, what a what a great musician and what a great guitar part. Yeah, Justin, I'm so Thank grateful you. for you to have taken all this time today to go through sort of the catalog of you know maybe not every one of Pink's biggest hits, but certainly many of her biggest hits. Yeah. And walking us through sort of your adaptations, sort of, you know, creating faithful sort of reproductions in some case of what went on on the records. And then in some case, embellishing those, bringing in new new things to translate that to a live performance. I think the thing that I'm most blown away with here is just, you know, the simplicity of a lot of this stuff. And yeah. that, like a lot of it wasn't, isn't even really using a ton of effects, if any effects. It yeah. was really just using core amp sounds you know, a Les Paul, and it's very stripped down to really let the the quality of, of the great instruments and, and the great pieces of equipment that you have shine through. And I'm just grateful that, you know, the Boost gets to make a, an appearance here, yeah. one of our products, <laughs> yeah. On, yeah. on some of the songs to help uh, you great. Know, I love them, deliver on, on uh, some of those great songs. So thank you so much. And uh, if, you're, if you're willing, we'd love to have you play a little something to uh, kind of fade us out. Here fade you out? Yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. 